JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 1st. I am Harald Lambospisros, head of research uh, here at uh, JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued uh, to strengthen against uh, all the other major currencies at the last day of uh, the first half of 2021, recording its uh, biggest uh, monthly rise since November 2016. It gained the most versus uh, JPY, CHF and AUD, while it decked out the, it decked out the least uh, gains against NZD and CAD. The strengthening of the US dollar and the weakening of the Aussie suggest that financial markets traded in a risk of fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the, the relative strength of uh, the Looney and the Kiwi combined with the weakening uh, of, uh, the yen, of the yen and franc points otherwise. Thus, uh, with, the effects, with the effects world painting a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world in order to clear things up. Here, major EU indices were a sea of red, and although market sentiment improved somewhat during the US session, it softened again during the Asian session today. European equity slid yesterday, despite Eurozone's inflation data confirming the view that the ECB is unlikely to start uh, considering withdrawing monetary policy support anytime soon. The headline rate uh, ticked down to 1.9% from 2% year over year, while the core one stayed unchanged at 0.9% year over year. So European investors may have refrained to add to their risk, uh, to their risk uh, exposure at the end of the month. Uh, excuse me, European investors may have refrained to add to their risk exposure at the end of the month and uh, the end of the quarter respectively perhaps due to portfolio rebalancing. Sentiment improved uh, during the US session with the Dow Jones gaining the most uh, and the S&P 500 hitting a fresh record high. Only Nasdaq slid somewhat. Market chatter suggests uh, that uh, this may have been due to the better than expected ADP employment report. That said, we don't believe that this, uh, that, uh, this was due to that. In our view, a strengthening labor market could uh, add more credence to the view that uh, of um, uh, could add more credence to the views of Fed officials who want to start raising interest rates as early as next year, which is negative for stocks. Remember that many stocks are valued based on their discounted earnings expected uh, in the years ahead, and thus higher rates mean lower present values. Market participants may have come to that realization later during the Asian session today, and that's why appetite softened again. The next event that may affect expectations around the Fed's future plans is the official US employment report due out on Friday. Non-farm payrolls are, are expected to have increased by 700k, more than May's 559k, while the unemployment rate is anticipated to have ticked down to 5.7% from 5.8%. Average hourly earnings are anticipated to slow somewhat in monthly terms, but the year-over-year -year rate is forecast to have surged to 3.6% from 2%, adding fears that inflation may continue to fly well above the Fed's objective of 2%. This is likely to strengthen further the case for an earlier tightening by the Fed and, um, and may add uh, extra support, support uh, to the US dollar. At the same time, although this would mean further progress in the world's largest economy, it could hurt equities as uh, higher rates mean more expensive borrowing and, as we already noted, lower present values. 
As for today though, the main event on the agenda may be the OBEC uh, Plus meeting, which may prove decisive for the faith of, uh, for the faith of oil prices and also affect oil-linked oil currencies like uh, the Canadian dollar and the Norwegian crown. Media chatter now suggests that producers are likely to agree on an increase in, outpu in, in output between 500k and 1 million barrels per day starting in August, with the latest search in oil prices giving them ample resources to believe that the market can absorb this kind of an increase. That said, although Russia is pushing for an increase, Saudi Arabia is more cautious. Therefore, with uh, that in mind and also taking into account concerns over uh, fresh restrictive measures due to the fast spreading of uh, the COVID uh, Delta variant, which could result in decreasing demand, we believe that the final decision will be near the lower end of uh, the range of expectations, namely at around 500k. In our view, this is unlikely to impact uh, much the broader path of oil prices. It may allow the current uptrend to continue. For oil prices to correct and decently lower, we think that the number beyond 1 million uh, barrels per day may be needed. Now, as for the rest of today's events, Besides the OPEC uh, plus decision, we also have uh, the final market manufacturing PMIs uh, for June from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, as well as the ISM manufacturing index for uh, the same month. As it is always the case, the final market prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, while the ISM index is expected to have declined fractionally to 61 from 61.2. The initial jobless claims for last week are also due to be released and expectations are for a decline to 390k from 411k. As for the speakers, we have uh, four on today's agenda, and those are Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, ECB President Christine Lagarde, ECB Chair of the Supervisory Board Andrea Enria, and Executive Board Member Frank, Frank uh, Elderson. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. At this point, I have to let you know that there will be no daily market review tomorrow and next week, neither a Weekly Market Outlook webinar on Monday. You will hear from me again on July the 12th. So goodbye, have a great day and a great rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.